two brothers, fathers and protectors. Ruler pride that's in crisis. Roving bands of rival males. Battle-hardened fighters and changing allegiances threaten to break the family apart. Could this be the end for the Yenseifu pride? Seifu brothers roar a warning to all. This is their land. These eight-year-old leaders have ruled here for three years. On average, males keep a pride for only two years, so they've already exceeded expectation. The brothers are a powerful force in the valley. Their role is to patrol their territory and safeguard their family from rival males. Between them, they've fathered all the youngsters here who range from five months to three years old. The secret to the twins' success is their unbreakable bond. They have worked side by side since the day they were born. Chief is the more confident of the two. Notch is less self-assured and happy for his brother to take the lead. Their territory is bordered to the west by the Luangwa River. Chief's roars can reach 114 decibels, louder than a jackhammer. They carry for eight kilometers through the bush, a clear signal to any rivals that he's in charge here. His calls reach a lone nomadic male. Young male lions leave their family pride when they're about three years old typically banding together for strength in numbers. Alone, this male is no match for Chief. But there are others out there. The east bank of the river marks the border of the brothers' territory. As the dry season progresses, it becomes the only source of water, drawing prey from far and wide. Roaming lions are sure to follow, and the brothers will have to work hard to defend their territory and pride. Notch is more of a lover than a fighter. One of the females is coming into estrus, so he's staying close to the family. Curling his lip helps draw in her pheromones to an organ on the roof of his mouth, enabling him to assess her readiness to mate. He needs to be patient for a little longer. Like all families, there are different characters in the pride. A cub that doesn't fit in. Adolescent boys who like to hang out in a gang. And the moms, the oldest of whom has been tracked by scientists for four years. These females are the pride's main hunters.
The Puku's tactic of running into the river seems to work. But one lioness calls her bluff. She's got competition. This is not worth the fight. The family decides to call it a day. One of the yearlings has been left behind on the other bank. He's instinctively wary of the river. It's not just crocodiles that are dangerous here. A hippo more than 10 times his weight could cause serious damage. With a little encouragement from the sidelines, he's safely reunited. One of the adolescents is more daring. But even he knows when to back down. Lesson learned. The river is a dangerous place. The brothers are back on patrol, but there's unease in the air. Three years is a long time to lead a pride and keep hold of a territory and it's getting harder. The brothers must split up to cover more ground and keep their borders under surveillance. It's a good strategy to make their presence felt, but one lion is more vulnerable than a pair. Chief, the born leader, is determined. Always prepared to go just that little bit further. His brother chooses to stay closer to the family. There's tension in the pride too. They can hear distant roars and sense the threat of intruders. A takeover is a violent time for all members of the pride, whatever their age. The adolescents would be chased away, still green, they'd have a hard time surviving on their own. Yearlings would be beaten up or evicted. As good as a death sentence either way. The youngest cub, just five months old, is still suckling. He'd be the first victim of a murderous new regime. The young female faces a dilemma she alone would benefit from an influx of new males. It's her only chance to mate. Only Notch, the male who stayed behind, seems unperturbed. He's always relied on his brother to be the fighter. He's more interested in finding food. This wild dog kill will do nicely. Even 12 dogs won't take on a big male lion. Scavenging and stealing are an important part of a male lion's arsenal. They spend lots of time away from the pride, so can't rely on the females, the most skilled hunters, to provide all their food. 
Stealing others' kills is a trick the adolescents need to learn too. Their hunting skills leave a lot to be desired, but at least their thieving instincts are kicking in. They've got the scent of a kill stashed in a tree by a leopard. A solitary cat would be no match for the lions. But this takeaway is out of reach. Exactly what the leopard intended. Worn out from his 24-hour long-distance patrol, Chief returns to the river that marks the western border of the Ansefo territory. At this time of year, low water levels reveal a sandbank in the middle of the river. In between lion territories, this is no man's land. Notch has come to the riverbank in search of his brother and leader. He's keen to be reunited, but is hesitant to step into unknown territory. Notch is not brave like Chief. But the desire to be with him is strong. He takes the plunge. Notch's relief is palpable. He reinforces his brotherly bond. But Chief can't relax. He knows that rival males are moving in. In the cool of the night, the adolescents are having another much-needed hunting lesson. Picking a target to focus on is key. As important as deciding what to let go. The chase is only part of the hunt. Success depends on teamwork. Some chase while others ambush. But these adolescents haven't worked out their roles yet. The oldest of the lionesses is apart from the hunters tonight. But she does have company. Notch. Always the lover, not the fighter. She's an estress.
In a heroic effort to keep rivals away from his family, Chief is patrolling the far eastern boundary of the Nsefu territory, 16 kilometers from the river. <laughs> But in securing the pride's inland boundary, he's left the river entrance wide open. Dawn brings strangers across the river. Two young bachelors, fit and healthy males, who've recently left their own family. They're taking their first steps as adults and are on the lookout for mating opportunities. These bachelors wouldn't stand a chance against the larger Nsefu brothers if they were together. But the brothers are apart. The young hopefuls listen for the roars of resident lions. But all is quiet. This territory seems too good to be true. So far, there's no sign of challenges. And it's pro These roars declare not possession of territory, but availability. And their urine leaves a distinctive odor, a calling card full of seductive information. They've timed their arrival perfectly. Their arrival means lions from far and wide will be closing in. At the eastern edge of the territory, Chief continues his boundary patrol. His battles have left him wounded and weary. Days later, Chief still hasn't returned. Notch and the Pride are on high alert. The Bachelor's distant roars are loud and clear. Without his brother for backup, Notch stays silent. The young female reacts differently. It's a big moment for her. She is now fully an estrus and is drawn towards the voice of a new male. She's never been away from her family before, but her desire to mate is strong. Between sound and scent, the directions are clear.
the young female isn't here to stay. The females have a kill, but the adolescents are nowhere to be seen. Unusual when there's food in the offing. They're probably disconcerted by the sounds and smells of the new males in the area and are keeping a low profile. With his brother gone and rivals on his doorstep, this will be a true test of Notch's metal. In this time of uncertainty, Nsefo's oldest lioness makes a monumental decision. She sets off towards the two young males who are still at the outskirts of the territory. Theirs is a battle of sound and smell, and the enemy has fallen silent. The young bachelors sense they're getting the upper hand. The lioness may well be pregnant from mating with Notch, and if these two males stick around, her cubs will be in grave danger. She must do everything she can to ensure their survival. In a takeover, the bachelors wouldn't hesitate to kill her cubs, unless she can convince them that they could be the father. But mating with the enemy is the ultimate betrayal. A vote of no confidence from the Pride's oldest member. A month has passed, and there's still no sign of Chief. In the line of duty, he ventured outside the safety of the park and was killed. Without its main leader, the pride is disintegrating. Now, the most experienced lionesses are leaving too. Notch stands alone. Having not eaten for days, he is hungry and thirsty. But the river is full of dangers. Alone, he's more vulnerable than ever. A 
buffalo stuck in the mud would usually be an easy meal. It's one of the reasons this riverfront territory is so valuable. But he's too nervous to approach. As the sun rises, Notch looks on as other mouths devour what could have been his. But he's not concerned about the crocodiles. Across the river, others have come to claim the buffalo. It's a huge pride, 22 lions strong. Three big males rule, and all the females have cubs. They're a tough, cohesive gang. Even the crocodiles know who's boss. The males get first feeding rights on the feast. It's clear who's in charge here. Notch keeps his presence hidden. With such a large family of their own, taking over the Ansefu pride is not on their It's a hollow reminder of what life used to be. As the dry season takes hold, more and more animals descend into the Insefu territory. The plane is restless. More rival males. This pair twice the age and double the weight of the young bachelors are in the heart of the Ansefu territory and are making themselves at home. The two nomads are seasoned brawlers. They fought their way through other lion territories for years and are afraid of nothing. One glimpse of this battle-hardened duo tells the younger pair all they need to know. Their stay in the Ansefu territory is over. These interlopers are a serious threat. Not only for Notch, but to all his offspring. With no sign of roars or scent marks, the big males are full of confidence. Already, they're claiming this land as their own.
the buffalo continued to keep the two interlopers well fed. In such high numbers, there will always be injured and sick individuals, providing plenty of opportunities for the two large males. Even if not every hunt is a success. Storm clouds gather, and finally the weather turns. The arrival of rain changes everything. The interloper's larder begins to move on. Unaware that there is an opportunity to take over a pride here, the hunters leave their calling card and depart with the herds. One of the mothers breaks the silence. It elicits just the response she hoped. One by one, the pride returns. The lions reaffirm their bonds, the vital glue that keeps the family united even after weeks of separation. Only Notch is alone, unaware that his pride has reunited. Notch scours the land for scraps, a lost soul without his brother or his pride. Where once he feared nothing, he's now easy to chase away.
river, the crocodiles have a feast. The carcass of an elephant, enough meat to feed a hundred mouths for several days. Desperately hungry, Notch is drawn in by the smell of food. Only the most foolhardy lion would brave crocodile-infested waters, but he's got nothing to lose. Sensing movement and more fresh meat, the crocs close in. not going to be pushed around by reptiles. The strong smell of the carcass and the commotion in the river attracts a lioness. She's one of the Ensefo pride. And she's not the only one watching the drama. A family of elephants has come to investigate. But Notch isn't interested in them. He hasn't seen a member of his pride for three weeks. Both are wary. Slowly, Notch seems to let down his guard. But she doesn't stay. Notch is alone once more. But seeing the female gives him a glimmer of hope. He gives it one last shot.
but his story is one of success. He is the father of many and still the king of this patch of Luangwa Valley. Time is running out, but his reign is not over yet.